That poster is on the wall in my office slash workshop slash goalie cave. I look at it a lot. And it gave me an idea. Welcome back. So if you didn't figure it out from that intro, uh, this is a Rick Walmsley Calgary Flames tribute. And I've actually done Rick Walmsley tribute a couple times in different variations. The one on the poster is a um, snapshot of a very short period of time. The things that make it that way are the pads he was wearing with the gloves he was wearing with the unpainted mask that he was wearing. I've done a couple other variations. In fact, probably one of the top two times I ever stepped out on the ice was the most amazing Rick Wamsley tribute. And that was almost two years ago now. I was able to meet up with my friend Yoni Halakainen and spend some time on the ice, getting some vintage goalie style lessons from him in the most over the top vintage goalie way we could. Looking at that poster over and over, I decided I was going to try something and I started Googling and I did find images where he wore the final painted mask with those pads and gloves for a short period of time. So it made sense to me that I'd put this kit together. And if you remember a few videos ago, I think it was the Detroit Vipers video where I mentioned I had a whole kit ready to go, but I changed my mind and backed out because one piece of the whole puzzle wasn't actually ready to go, and that was the pants. The pants, I had removed the yellow stripe that I temporarily sewed on at some point after the last time I used them that way. In order to do this, the day of the game, I think it was, I actually couldn't locate the stripes that I had made previously, so I had to cut and sew new stripes and then sew them on the pant so that I would have a proper looking pant for this kit. Now, previously when I did the Wamsley Flames Tribute Kit, I actually covered up the Red Wing logo with a homemade uh, temporary sewn on Flames logo patch. I didn't have time to redo that again, so I just left the red tape on there for this one. The jersey itself I ordered from blankhockeyjerseys.com and I actually got the matching socks with it as well. Uh, but it was a blank jersey. So I recreated the graphics using heat transfer vinyl and put the logos on there and the number and the sleeve number. And then I used some red fabric and made a nameplate that I put the heat transfer name on. Honestly, I mean, it looks like a cheap reproduction jersey because it's heat transfer vinyl on there, but overall, it's got the right look and it's the right style of jersey. I'm not really going to talk about the pads this time because I just wore those pads a few games ago and because I've done a gear review on the whole pro series of gear from Cooper and I'll put a link to that up there in the corner and down in the description as well in case you want to see that and haven't seen it yet. The stick, the stick is a bit of a story. Uh, this is a stick I actually painted in this color scheme, but it is a legitimate Cooper Superlight SL stick. One that I got that was pretty much a new old stock stick, but it was the old uh, sort of like Louisville Pro Glow. It had the neon color to it. It was neon green. At some point, someone had, looked like they tried covering up that green or removing it or something. I don't know. So it, the graphics all looked terrible. And couple years ago, I stripped that stick all the way down and repainted it. I wanted a red, white, and blue stick. So I repainted it red, white, and blue. And then when Yoni and I were talking about meeting up in Hamilton and doing this, you know, flames tribute, I figured I would just use that stick and strip it down again and repaint it in all of the appropriate colors and color scheme. Now, Rick used a super pro light stick not a super light SL, but I wanted to keep the graphics all correct on this one for what it actually is. And uh, that led me to just recreating all the super light SL markings instead of trying to fake it as a stick that it's not. I doubt I'll ever strip this one down and repaint it again, 
but you never know. Well, now I'm gonna talk about the gloves because in order to do this kit, I actually had to cheat. Pretty hardcore cheat. So the trapper I'm wearing in this game is actually a GM9 catch glove. And this is a really low end glove, especially for the era that, the, that this version of this model is from. This is like a early 90s version. And at that point, it had just taken a beating and gotten moved all the way down. There is not a whole lot of protection to this glove. There's not a lot of structure to this glove. It is a really low end glove. What Rick seemed to be wearing with that kit was actually a GM 31 with a custom cuff wrist pad. Uh, there were two versions of the 31 with the wrist pad. I've shown them before. There's basically the square type wrist pad like this or rectangle and then the one with the rounded edge. In the photos, it really looks like he has mostly the rectangle but um, a small pad here where it overlaps at the wrist instead of the actual rounded. I've never seen any good close-up photos of that glove, so it's hard to tell. There's just no structure in this glove at all. Nothing to really protect you. So I was kind of risking it because this is like a D-League game. And every now and then, you know, in the D-League, you get some guys that can actually shoot really hard. And if they have accuracy, it can be kind of rough when you're not wearing the right gear. It was worth the risk to me because I have a lot of fun doing this. One thing I did do to modify this glove, which by the way, I've never used this glove until this game. This one has the red binding on it and the red accents. And I had looked at this and looked at the poster and looked at this and looked at the poster. And visually from a distance, the big difference was that the 31 had a lace around the cheater. And so I modded this glove, punched the holes, got an extra section of lace and redid all that and and wrapped the uh the lace around the cheater just to get that look out of it now the blocker he's wearing is a gm12 durasoft with the waffle hole design on the front and that's what i have here but once again i cheated i don't have that blocker with a red binding like you see right now and i had this harebrained idea that it might be kind of easy to use red hockey tape and go over top of the binding that's on there and make it look right. And I think overall it did, partially because I did unlace the top and cut around the eyelets. So it didn't look like I had just put hockey tape over the lace or the eyelets. But other than that, I've worn this blocker before. I cheated on the gloves but I think I made up for it on the mask. This is a Wall Finland W4 with a custom one-off cheater cage to replicate the way Wamsley's cages were. The paintwork is done by my friend Yoni at Bona Halakainen Customs on Instagram. And I'll put a link to that down in the description it's an amazing tribute paint job, similar to Wamsley's paint with the flames. It's not a replica, it's a tribute. I mean, it's a different shape and design mask just to start with. So this was an amazing gift from Yoni when we got together in Hamilton those couple years ago. Surprisingly, as somebody that doesn't wear the full mask very often at all, and rarely ever do I wear a modern full mask, uh, I adjust to this really well. I like the fit of the wall mask. This mask doesn't get a lot of use by me, obviously. It's really my shelf display. But hey, when you have this mask, you have to do a Rick Walmsley tribute kit once in a while, right? So that's the kit for this game. The video's coming up. I actually have kind of a inadvertent special guest star in this particular video, Dr. Dangles from Head Down Hockey on YouTube here, happened to be playing for the other team in this one. Uh, he and I have actually played together in the past. We've played against each other a few times now over the last few years. It was kind of fun seeing him out on the ice and knowing that eventually here, I'll be in one of his videos on his YouTube channel, which I'll put a link to down in the description as well. Um, you can go through, he's got, I don't even know, hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of videos, I'm not sure. 
I'm pretty sure he plays hockey four or five times a week, or at least as often as possible. I point him out in the video, just keep an eye out for him throughout the gameplay. I made some saves. He might have scored some goals. So again, the game video is coming up. I think the edit turned out pretty well. And if you like the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Leave some comments if you want to talk about the gear or anything. Make sure you check out the links that I put down in the uh, description there. And if you know anybody that might want to see it, feel free to share a link with them. And as always, if you don't mind and you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way when I post new videos, you'll get an alert. Thanks. On that goal, I really bet I thought he was passing it to the open wing.
10 to 1, losing 2 to 1. And then three to two after two. Four to three win. Let's go. 